Hi everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this penny slider rocker card. So can you see the bumblebee moving very nicely around this section here? And then it sits on a rocker card. So if you haven't seen the rocker card, they literally do that. They rock. I've got a playlist with these rocker cards so you could take elements of that playlist, you know, different designs, colourways, themes. I've got a sidestepper rocker card as well, which is really cool. And then you could, you know, add the penny slider or you could just do a big penny slider as your card it's really really fun you can see he moves so nicely around and then also as you rock it can you see he kind of moves as well when you rock it I've got a stopper inside there I did end up adding one during the live when I made this I thought I wouldn't but I have and on the back you've got lots of space there to write your message okay so first of all you want to decide on what size you want your card to be so this is actually a seven by seven when it folds down flat it will fit in a 7x7 seven seven envelope. If you'd rather have a 6x6 six six, then drop it down, you might want 5x5, five five, you might want 8x8, eight eight, but if you've got an envelope maker or you've seen my how to make your own envelope any size then you can do this any size you want. But I've gone for 7x7 seven seven again so I'm doing exactly the same. So you want to cut a 7 diameter circle, now I've used my X cut circle cutter, I know lots of you have this, and then you want to score whatever the size is of your circle, you want to score halfway. So for me, I'm going to score it three and a half because it's a seven inch diameter. If you've got six by six, for example, then you'll score it three. You just want to fold and burnish and that will give you the base of your rocker card. Really, really easy. They are probably up there as one of the easiest cards to make and quickest as long as you don't go and add all the extras like me. Then you want to choose the size of your penny slider. Okay, so this is this piece here now that we're working on. So I've gone for a five inch diameter. And you want to die cut two. Now I did heat emboss and ink this piece and it's exactly the same as the shaker card that I shared over on Craft World and I shared a little teaser video a couple of days ago. It's the same technique and actually a few of the flowers and other bits and pieces that I've done with this card have kind of, you know, I've been inspired from that one. So cut two of those. This one we're going to die cut into. This is just the base. And then I also went ahead and I, well I had these left over actually. You're going to be cutting them in half to decorate the front and the back. So I need to cut some more for the back of this one. I've done that one but I need to, no I need to do another one of that size which I'll do shortly. This is for the back. So you want to cut a circle, six and three quarter diameter, so cut it in half. I've inked just the edges of this because then I'm popping this one on top which is my where I'm going to write my message and that's six and a quarter diameter. So cut one of each size and cut them in half and then you've got one piece that will go on the front here. You'll have the other half will go on the back and I've just inked the edges and then you'll have this one and then if you're making two then you've got another half for the back of that one but like I said I will cut this piece again in a moment to go on the front. Also then if you do want to do the stand, I've got this piece here which is three by one inch and along the three inch side you want to score at half an inch, one and a half and two and a half. And then you're going to do a valley, a mountain and a valley. So you have that shape there. Okay, then what you want to do is die cut the penny slider. Now I've gone for these here. These are the plain Sizzix circles dies. I've had these for years. They are just ones that I go to all the time. The reason I love these so much as well is because the cut line is that inner line. If you, if I bring it up there, can you see the blade? Or the, you know, well it is a blade but it's not, it's a blunt blade. It's right at the, it's right on the edge of that inside circle. So it's just really easy when I like want to measure things and line things up. So this largest one is three and three quarters and I think this one was just about three, yeah. So what you want to do is lay it over your five inch circle, your pattern paper, whatever it is that you've chose to. And you want to make sure, I'm going to grab some of my tape here as well, because you need to tack this in place. So you want to make sure that you've got a nice equal frame on the outside of the card, like so. I think that's about right. And then this one you want to make sure you have it nice and centered so you get a nice even frame all around this section here. Now I ended up flipping over this middle bit but if you want to have the pattern so it all looks like it's one piece still then you will keep it facing up this way. Again that will all make sense in a moment. So I'm just going to tack that in place and run that through my die machine. Take that all away and you'll have these three pieces. And just go around make sure you don't have any kind of sometimes some of the dies might leave like a few like fluffy bits around so I'm just kind of scratching them off and just making sure that's all nice and smooth 
we've got no you know rough edges or anything because we do want this to move nice and freely so now if you'll see here this piece here is actually this bit flipped over and then I inked it I just I kind of like that effect but you can imagine you can have it all the same and it would be like that so it's up to you now you want to add a thin piece of foam around that circle so I like to use my wax paper and then I can just cut myself thin strips of foam and it doesn't mess up your scissors these are my best scissors <laughs> I do clean them every now and then but they they do uh, certainly get used and abused you want nice thin strips mine are probably about a quarter of an inch thick flip this one over and you're going to pop the phone so it just runs as close as you can get it to the outer edge and just pull in the re release paper away work that around don't worry if it kind of crumples up a little bit once you take the release paper off the top it will be nice and flat so that just about meets I'm actually going to leave that gap because it's going to work really well for when I want to stick my little floating bee there so I'm going to remind myself where that is and when I go to stick this down in fact we can stick it on here now because you can move it still when we go to actually stick it on the card so just take your release paper off now another useful tip for this to just just to get that smooth movement with the slider element is I like to use my anti-static buddy you might have the powder or some corn flour on a paintbrush and just go around and just kind of push it in there and it will take off any stickiness that's on the side of the foam and it will also remove any other sticky marks that may be that may be on this cardstock that you just don't know can't see it and it just gets rid of any static and it just helps any kind of kinetic cards it's just quite a handy thing to do then I'm going to make the other side of this so I can start sticking that down and get the card put together. So I'm using all of the colours that I've used for this. I've, no, I've not used any pattern paper. So I've got the Spun Sugar, Dusty Concord, Milled Lavender and Seedless Preserves. They're the four colours that I've used. It was mainly to ink this, so there's those four colours within that piece there. And then I've also used them on the flowers. If you want to see how I made the flowers, you can watch the Facebook Live, which I'll link below. Or you can go over to Craft World, which I'll also link below, and it will show you the beautiful emboss resist shaker card that I made. And um, again, lots of good tips on that video. And there's also a giveaway there as well. So you can enter the giveaway, which is free, and the video is free to watch as well. And uh, yeah, you might win a prize. Okay, so that's all linked up. What I'm now gonna do is attach the stopper because I think it will just help because once we start adding all the decoration, you wanna make sure it's gonna rock nicely and everything's gonna be balanced. So if you get the stopper put in, that will help. So you just wanna add a little bit of glue onto one of the end tabs. You want the mountain in the middle facing up and you're gonna sit this in the center. So you just wanna bring down, it is close to the bottom of the card there as you can you don't want to be able to see it you just want to bring it down as low as you can and then I'm just going to add some more glue on that other tab fold it all down flat and then close the card so you don't want to be able to see that when it's closed okay so now we've got the stopper all in place next I'm going to stick this down onto the front Okay, so that's all stuck down. Next, I'm gonna add my glue onto the back of this ring. And this is easy to stick in, so you just wanna lay it down right inside that one there. Okay, and then this one, I'm just gonna pop just a little bit of foam in the middle. We're gonna stick that in there in a second. But first of all, we wanna grab these bits here, which are gonna be, this is what the penny slider is. So a lot of people use pennies, I don't. I would just rather use cardstock or acetate. Now acetate was actually mentioned during the live and I thought that's actually a really good idea but what I found is if you die cut the acetate that doesn't work because what it what the dye does to the acetate is it almost stretches it and it kind of 
it gave it a slight domed shape and I, I put it on after the live and it just wasn't spinning freely. So what I ended up doing is I punched a one inch circle or you can die cut a one inch circle and then I laid it over my acetate and I cut around it. And by cutting around the acetate, it's completely flat and smooth. I know you can't, it's like you're looking at air, but the, you can just about see them there. So I've got two little one inch discs, okay? But by cutting them by hand, it was just much, much better if I just lay them. Can't even see them there. Oh, they are there, I promise. So what you want to do next is if you've got any circle foam, little foam tabs, then use those because they're obviously work much better because they're circular and it means, again, it will just be able to move freely. But what I'm doing is cutting three little squares here. This is my foam tape. I'm going to stick these on top of each other, put those two back to back, take the release paper off of one. I'll hold this all up closer in a moment. So I've just stacked three pieces of foam on top of each other and then make sure that's all secure. And then I'm just going to just try and cut just a, like kind of a circle shape, at least get the corners off, just try and round it off. It doesn't have to be, you know, really neat, but you just want to kind of just like so I've got some ordered they just haven't arrived yet but now we've got just kind of a rounded little shape there grab your anti-static buddy make sure you've got the release paper still on the, the top and the bottom but just rub it on there just to get rid of any stickiness that's on the side and then take the release paper off of one side grab one of the circles and pop it as centered as you can get it like so there we go. And then you're going to sit it in there and pop it under one side. Okay, I'm going to pop it on that side. I'm now going to take the release paper off of this piece and I'm going to line this up with the circle underneath. Like so. And you can still take the penny slider out if you need to. It's very easy to. You can just lift this up because I haven't put too much foam on there because you want this to be able to move. So I'm just rubbing that around there. But now you can see already that slider moves around. So just do a test run. And then I'm going to take the release paper off the top and then stick on the other piece of acetate, like so. Then I've got my butterfly here. So I'm going to grab some of my red tape and I'm going to sit my butterfly over the penny slider. Okay, and then you can give it a test, and he really does. He's shooting around there. Got a little bit caught there, but he, he does. He moves really nicely. So just test all of that. Then I have my Love You Mum. So I should actually show what I've used here, because I forgot. So that's the stamp set. So this is my Garden Delights. So that's the panel that I used to stamp all of this. This is the flower that I've used to stamp all of my flowers. And then there's the bees that I've used. So you've got two kind of poses of the bees there. You've got all these other lovely bits as well. And then there's the stamp for this one, the thank you, is a very old Dovecraft. And then the love you mum is this one here. This isn't the card I'm gonna be giving to my mum for Mother's Day, but I do have friends who will be wanting cards. So I thought I'd start now. So love you mum, and it's stamped with the same colour ink. So this is the Seedless Preserves, such a lovely colour. Pop that in the middle. Okay, again now you can see it spins lovely. And then this is going to stick on the top of here. Now you just want to make sure that you get your height because I want this to fit in a seven inch envelope. So I can actually come up to about there. Yep, so again I just kind of held the butterfly in place and then I'm going to use this glue here and then I can just pop some glue on that little section there and then just sit that over the top make sure you've got an equal overhang you might want to do your sentiment once you've stuck this down just to make sure you get that straight but that's all worked out fine so I'm really pleased with that oh I have thought though <laughs> that foam piece I wonder if I can quickly twist all that yeah it's there I'm going no I'm not I was just going to move that around but I did I deliberately 
typical when I do something to help myself and then I forget but it's fine we'll leave it as it is so now we just need to finish it off with the decoration so I'll sort out the bee in a bit you would just pop it on some acetate and then feed it into the gap if you've remembered but I've now got all my flowers which I've already shaped and again you can see how I do that and I'm going to stick them on here but you want to make sure that this isn't going to catch so I mean it you know it wants to be able to slide past there so that one is good Okay, so everything's stuck down, really love it. And I've just wedged the bee just under the foam there. Then I'm gonna finish it with my sparkle pen. So if you can see when it catches the light, you see all the sparkle in here. So I ended up going all around that ring and I've added sparkle already to all of the flowers. So I'm just gonna add it to this here. Now I've used oxide ink, so they do end up reacting to this, but it gives it a nice water colored effect. So I'm just gonna work around this and then I've added some Nuvo drops just for a little bit more interest and that will dry lighter as well it looks quite dark right now but it does lighten up you can see that one's gone back to matching that color so it does it does dry nice so I'm just going to add a couple of little drops here just a few kind of tucked in here can't really do any on that side I think that'll do yeah, I'm pleased with that. Just bring it up there, you can see. And then you can see the bee. He spins around really nicely. I do, I absolutely love this again. I don't want to move that too much because that blob there is quite big. But if I just bring this one in, I'm just gonna level that off a bit. Probably better on that actually, there we go. And I'll just bring this one back in again so you can just see all the sparkle, all the shine. And I just need to add those pieces to the back of this one once it's all dry. There you have it, two really pretty penny slider rocker cards. So like I said, check out the rocker, rocker card playlist, which will be up here, because there's loads of nice inspirations there. And I hope you enjoy the penny slider element on this one. Thank everything I've used in the description box below. Please check out the tutorials that are popping up now, because they will be similar, probably you might enjoy and want to watch those as well. Thanks as always, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you soon. Bye.